We're now going to talk about uh, a different characterization of integrality. So again, um, as we've been as we've been saying, t total unimodularity is focused on integrality uh, for every possible right hand side. So this is only a property of the matrix. And, th and, and that in part is why it is also very powerful once you have it. So uh, y using it is, uh, is, is, uh, is very nice. So again, we're talking about this is being uh, integral for all B, but what if instead we want to characterize um, for a fixed A and B, when is this integral? I shouldn't say when, because it's, we're never going to come up with if and only if conditions. Um, guarantee integrality of, uh, of, of this. And, and, and of course, what we, what we really care about is um, a minimizing or maximizing an LP over, over this, kind of, uh, this kind of constraint. So this is an opportunity for us to revisit some basic properties of uh, linear equalities and inequalities and uh, convex, convex bodies and in particular polytopes. So um, I want to remember a few, a few basic facts about uh, faces and, uh, and supporting hyperplanes. So let's, uh, let's recall a few definitions. So if, um, if H is a, hyper, is a, is a, is a sub, sorry, is a, is a hyperplane, it's defined by a normal vector and by a scalar. So H is all X such that the normal vector S times X is equal to B. S is a vector, um, B, is, uh, B is a scalar in this case. And this is called a supporting hyperplane. This is a hyperplane. H is called a supporting hyperplane if it has a non-zero intersection with P. And I should write P is my AX less than B. Although the way that, I, that, that, that uh, P is defined isn't immediately important for what I'm, from what I'm writing down right now. Uh, but will be uh, in, in, a moment, in a moment. But as we've seen, we can transform easily from one description to, to another, one inequality description to another. Um, so H is called a supporting hyperplane if, first of all, H and P is, uh, has a non-empty intersection uh, and if P uh, lies on either H plus or H minus, where H plus would be all X such that S transpose X is greater than or less than or equal to B on one side. And again, that, you know, what, what can an intersection uh, look like if this is, if this is P? The intersection um, could, could be uh, an entire face or it could be an extreme point, but you can see that it can't go, it can't slice through the middle because it wouldn't violate uh, the non-zero intersection, but it would violate the fact that P has to lie on, uh, on one side or, or the other. Now F, which is a subset of P, is called a face of P if F can be written as all X in P and the intersection of several uh, hyperplanes. So I'm going to write this as a dash x equals b dash. The, uh, unfortunately, you know, sometimes dash is used for transpose, and probably I've done that as well in the lectures. But here I mean that uh, a dash b dash, a subset of the rows of a, B, in other words, a subset of the of, of equalities. All, all this is saying is um, just choose some of the inequalities, make them tight. That's what defines a face of, of 
p. And you can see that a face of p could be uh, zero dimensional if you've chosen n equal to the dimension tight inequalities, that would be a vertex, or it could be a line, it could be a, uh, a higher dimensional um, so, uh, affine subspaces intersect with, uh, with p as well. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> um, we can think about uh, faces including each other. So being, uh, because if I, just an, an easy an easy shape for me to to draw um, this uh, this entire two-dimensional this is a two-dimensional face and that two-dimensional face contains a one-dimensional face and that one-dimensional face contains a zero-dimensional face which is just the the vertex so uh, we can define um, we can define a minimal face or a maximal face uh, just by, um, just by, uh, uh, with, with inclusion. So as, as, by way of a definition, F is, uh, a minimal, again, um, inclusion wise face of P if and only if F is an affine subspace. In other words, F is equal to X in Rn, not just X in P of uh, A prime X equals B prime. This is not, let's not get caught up with this definition. If, if, uh, if P is bounded, then this is just saying that, omit, that just what the picture is saying, a minimal face is just uh, an extreme point. That's all, that's all it could be. And, and note that if we're talking about an extreme point, then that means that my system, my subsystem, A prime and B prime, has to have N independent inequalities. And so I no longer need to tell you what P is. It just defines it explicitly. But you can imagine an unbounded uh, polytope, uh, a polyhedron, that's unbounded, that possibly has one part of it that has you know, no corners. Um, so you might still have a minimal face. So for example, um, AX less than or equal to B also defines everything where the first component X1 is non-negative. So in this case, a minimal face would be just the, sorry, X3 is non-negative. So the, the, the plane and the x1, x2 plane is an example in this case of a minimal face. And indeed, it's a, it is an affine, um, it is an affine uh, subspace. Okay. Okay, so um, here's our first, uh, our first result about, about integrality. And it says the following. Again, part of, part of the reason that, that I want to do this is it gives us a little bit of an opportunity uh, exercise with, 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 these, with these ideas again. So uh, the theorem says the following. P, which is uh, defined as AX less than B, is integral if and only if every rational supporting hyperplane contains an integral vector. So what does that mean? It's saying that if H is a supporting hyperplane, it's a hyperplane that touches P either at a corner or at an entire face, and, uh, and P lies on one side of it, then somewhere on H, somewhere on that hyperplane, possibly not in P, uh, H has an integral vector. So one direction is, uh, is obvious. So this, this direction is obvious. Namely, if P is integral, well, if P is integral, it means all of its extreme points are integral. And that means that any supporting hyperplane is going to contain at least one extreme point. 
So that, that direction is obvious. So again, this theorem, if it's useful at all, of course, we'll see that it is, but if it's useful at all, what's useful about it is a reverse inclusion. It's saying that we want to prove a harder property. We want to prove that every extreme point is integral. Now let's just show that, that every supporting hyperplane contains somewhere, maybe not in P, a, uh, a rational vector. So let's, uh, again, partly to prove the theorem and partly just to give us exercise with these things, let's, let's, prove, uh, let's prove the reverse. Okay, so I'm um, looking at uh, P is AX less than B, and I'm not gonna assume it's integral. I'm gonna assume that every rational supporting hyperplane contains an integral vector. Now without loss of generality, the polytope AX less than B, since it contains rational data, I could just scale A and B without changing P. Um, and, uh, and, and therefore assume that uh, A and B are integral. So we're all already assuming that they are, that they are rational. Oh, I guess I didn't, sorry, the, the hyperplane is rational, but uh, in every, everything we're talking about, A and B are, are rational. So A and B, rational. Um, other, otherwise, there's, you know, there, there's no hope. Um, and it's also not even interesting because we can't write it down with finite, fi finite precision. Um, okay, so now let's let, uh, let's, uh, let F denote a minimal face. So if it's a minimal face, just by our previous, what was on the previous slide, it has to be of the form a prime x equals b prime. Again, you can just think of a vertex here. Just think, think of this being a vertex if you, if, if, if you like. Um, but we're trying to prove something in, in more generality. So let's let f be a minimal face. And again, usually for a face, I need to write that x is in p such that a prime a dash x equals b dash. Here, because of minimality, I'm allowed to omit the, the, the description that x has to belong in, uh, in p. Okay, so again, if p is bounded, then f has to be uh, an extreme point. Okay, um, claim is that if f contains no integral vector, then there exists some vector y that's positive. I'm not saying that y is necessarily integral, uh, just component-wise positive, such that y transpose a dash is integral. But y transpose b dash is not. So I'm going to leave this for you as, a, as an exercise. This takes a little bit of thinking, uh, and, it's, and it's worthwhile th thinking, your way, uh, thinking your way through this. Okay, so where are we? We're saying that f is a minimal face. Uh, suppose that f does not contain an integral vector. If it do, we're trying to show that f, f does. Uh, and we somehow have to use... Uh, yeah, so, so, so let's, let's, uh, let, let, let's keep going. So now let's uh, let's let uh, let's let these two vectors here, the, the vector y transpose a dash and the scalar y transpose b dash, define a hyperplane. So let's let c equal y transpose a dash. This is integral, and let's uh, let's call y transpose b dash. Let's call that a scalar gamma. And now look at the hyperplane H is equal to x such that c transpose x is equal to gamma. Another exercise for you is to show that f can also be written as the intersection of p and this single constraint. Okay, so again, I've collapsed, I took the constraints of f, possibly many constraints, I collapsed them into one single constraint and I'm claiming that f is equal to p and h. The fact that f is contained in p and h is immediate, just by how I obtained uh, c and, and, and gamma. So, but now with this exercise, we're basically, uh, we're basically done because 
uh, c is integral and h is a supporting hyperplane but that means that h contains no integral vectors. Again, why is that? Well, that's, that's an easy part. Just look at the definition of h. h is equal to c transpose x. Uh, it's all x that's that c transpose x equals gamma. If there's an integral vector x in there, what's c transpose x going to be? c is integral. x is, if x is integral, then c transpose x is integral. But you can't have integral vector dot product with an integral vector and get gamma, which is uh, non-integral. So that is the that is the contradiction. So what we've done so far um, is we've showed that there is a uh, the, an easier characterization, and we'll see why it's useful in the next lecture. But we showed that a polytope is a polyhedron is integral if and only if every supporting hyperplane somewhere uh, contains an integral vector. In the next lecture, we're going to use this to define a property called total dual integrality, and, uh, and, and, and this will help us give characterizations of integrality for fixed A and B, as opposed to what we had for total unimodularity, which was characterization of integrality for every B. So we're going to stop here, and we will pick this up uh, next time.